Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight, for acquiring a disciplined and prudent life, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to the simple, knowledge to the discern discretion discretion to the young let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables the sayings of and riddles of the wise greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this is Oklahoma Tomcat coming to you from Buckeye Arizona I pray that everyone uh, finds this blog in good health and spirits and I want to say I'm sorry for being so long uh, getting this next blog out this blog uh, <clears throat> as you can probably guess you know over the holidays uh, um, I'll wasn't going to get uh, the vlogs out, spending time with family. But to add to the mix, uh, my runs have become kind of uh, out of the ordinary. Um, right around Christmas time, uh, Alco, which is the uh, account I was running on, uh, laid off all their uh, warehouse workers for a whole month. So, temporarily I've been running as an over-the-road driver. Went up to Washington State, which I want to get uh, post a video on my blog uh, of that run. Uh, and been down to southern Texas. Uh, runs have been pretty good, can't complain. Um, been running all over the place, and the paycheck has been very good too. Um, also to add to it, got a uh, tattoo ring, my wife and I, and uh, see if we can get on this, uh, uh, there it is, right there, yeah. my very first tattoo, <laughs> I was able to survive the Navy uh, without getting a tattoo, and I've always uh, jokingly told everyone when they asked uh, how can I go through the whole Navy without getting a tattoo, I just simply tell them that when you have a body as good looking as mine, you don't need to decorate it. guess I can't use that anymore. But, uh, <laughs> but I am glad I got the tattoo. Uh, it is nice. Uh, my wife was very happy and I have to say that there is a lot of benefits to it. Uh, I used to get my ring caught in certain things that you know while working and everything. Uh, and with a tattoo, a wedding tattoo, you don't have to worry about that. So, and uh, I mean, yeah, it did uh, hurt, but not as bad as I thought it was going to. Uh, it it really, I thought it was going to be a whole lot more painful um, so I'm glad and uh, it looks nice I have to admit as part of a series of uh, blogs I've been doing I've uh, been uh, blogging about uh, financial success and uh, how to become financially successful if you haven't uh, seen my first two blogs on this series um, you'll see the uh, uh, the web address at the bottom of the screen and uh, 
I urge you to please uh, look at those uh, or watch those videos uh, because to achieve financial success you have to follow all four steps I'll be giving you. Um, currently we're on the third one which is on wisdom. You can't be financially successful if you're foolish, if you make foolish decisions. And all the decisions that you have to make in life, even the ones that don't immediately have to do with finances, can hurt you financially. And I'm going to show you that. Now, on this one here, it's a little bit different than the other ones. The other ones, I was able to give you exact uh, uh, scripture to tell you what not to do and what to do such as work uh, the Bible has throughout the Bible that you have to work uh, and uh, this one here also overlaps the other ones because uh, I mean if you don't if you decide you're not going to work well that is foolish isn't it okay. to get yourself in debt which is another thing, then, yeah, that's going to be foolish, you know. If you believe in a lot of what society tells you about finances and how to get money, how to support yourself, how to support your family, chances are it's going to be foolish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through several scriptures and then I'm going to wrap it all together with giving you examples. A lot of deciding what is foolish and what is not foolish is going to de depend on you doing your homework. To think before you do something, before you act. Okay? So, let's go to Proverbs 10. And a lot of these are going to be in Proverbs, go figure, huh? You know, the Book of Wisdom is going to tell you how to be wise and not foolish. Ah, pages are sticky. There we go. Alright, Proverbs 10, verse 8. The wise in heart accept commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. And that one there seems pretty obvious to me. A wise person is going to accept commands from other people, from his leader, from his superiors, uh, from God. Uh, Proverbs 13.20 He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. And this one here goes for both adults and children. You parents out there, you are supposed to determine who is going to, who's going, your your children going to friend, okay, who they're going to hang out with. You will be leading your child to live a life of foolishness if you let that child decide who their friends are going to be. But it's very easy to be foolish. Very easy. It doesn't take much at all. Okay? Uh, foolish behaviors, foolish thinking is very contagious. If you hang yourself, hang out around foolish people, you yourself are going to be end up foolish. Okay, um, listening to what they say suddenly starts making sense, which a lot of things in society does seem to make sense if you don't challenge it. Society is very easy in making something look like it really isn't. Proverbs fourteen. 
7 through 8. Stay away from a foolish man, for you will not find knowledge on his lips. The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways, but the fool but the folly of fools is deception. Again, you want to uh, stay away from foolish people. And uh, because foolish people will uh, uh, deceive you. Proverbs fifteen fourteen. All the days of oppress of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful heart has a con oh shoot. <laughs> Ah, sorry about that. I was reading 1515. This, the discerning heart seeks knowledge, but the mouth of a fool feeds on folly. Proverbs Fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. Like I said, some of the things that we can do fool uh, do uh, that's foolish can ruin us financially, even though it's not tied directly to how we handle finances. Okay, anger. And acting in anger. Now, of course, we all get angry, but how you control yourself is the key. Okay, acting in anger can cause you lots of financial problems. And if you can't see that, then you really don't pay attention to society very well, because we see angry people all the time. At people acting in anger. Watch any of the court shows, Judge Judy, Judge Mathis, <coughs> and you will see this, if you don't see it around you, if you don't see it around you, then I kind of question where you're hiding, <laughs> um, and I've seen parents where their children got taken away because of them going in, the parent going into rage, you know, uh, I've seen people lose their jobs because they act in angry, anger. I've seen people quit their jobs in anger. Um, very foolish, very, very foolish, because now you're without a job. Who do you hurt? Did you hurt your employer, or do you hurt yourself? So, you, if you have anger issues, you really need help. All right. Divorces, anger. And of course, along with divorce comes financial problems, doesn't it? And actually, even if you're not married, um, if you've been living together for a long time, you're going to have financial problems. I see that in court cases, too. So, you control your anger, because... And then, how about prison? That will definitely ruin you financially, huh? If you act in anger, such great anger that you end up getting arrested. Let's go outside of Proverbs for our last one. Let's go to James. And then I'll tie all this together in a short message.
Deep Testament here. Okay, we've got James 2, verse 20. <coughs> you foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did? when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. Now the reason I bring that up is because uh, I hear a lot of people talk about faith, but yet their actions don't follow the faith. Faith alone, alone, while you are saved, and you will go to heaven if you have faith in Jesus Christ. But your life here on earth is going to really be hard if you don't act on the faith that you have in God and what He says in His Word. And part of this is in your finances. And whether you're going to have a successful life or whether you're going to be struggling and depending on the government or other people all your life. Let's go over some of the foolish things that I hear in society and some foolish things I see a lot of people doing. And a lot of this is also is really starts at a young age. Like teenagers. How about getting pregnant, having sex, period, before you are married? Foolish? Is no, is fact that you have sex before marriage, or if you have sex anyway, there's a good chance you're going to get pregnant. Maybe even STDs. What happens then? Are you ready to have a child? Are you ready to go through the rest of your life with a uh, disease? Either way, you're going to end up with financial problems, aren't you? You just messed up your future. How about quitting school? Not, not graduating. Statistics show that if you quit school and don't graduate, you are chances of you having a good job is going you just decreased it quite a bit um, and this is also goes back to the anger issue you know are you quitting school because you're angry because something's happening in school that you don't like or is it just because you're lazy which then goes back to my first blog I think it was my first blog uh, that you know in laziness you're never going to get financially successful um, and that's part of the whole thing with completing school I realize schools alone do not do very good today they don't teach the things they're supposed to and unfortunately a lot of our high school graduates uh, graduate um, not ready for the workforce that's sad. I agree with that. But the whole thing with finishing school shows that you are not lazy. It takes a lot to finish school, to graduate. Um, and it's very important in the workforce. If uh, you don't have the willpower to finish something, then what's the chance that you're going to get a job and finish your job? Do a good job listening to your employer which brings up the next thing foolishness the Bible tells us that we must work as we are working for God which means when you get a job are you 
listening to your employer? Are you doing what he tells you to do? Are you working very hard? If not, you're being foolish. Which, while well, I was telling you, some of this go overlaps the other things that I've talked about. How about debt? If you're in debt, is that smart? And if you're in debt, do you follow what society says in that you have to uh, go further in debt to get out of debt? That's the way our government seems to think. Is that being foolish? How about getting married before you're financially ready? Before you're emotionally ready? Foolish? How about having children before you're financially ready? Foolish? Getting married, a shoe I saw on a court show the other day. Guy got married, he didn't even have a job. Foolish? And of course this goes both, to both, you know, men and women. Women don't have to have sex uh, before they're married. Believe it or not, women can say no, and so can a guy. Um, last I checked, it took two to, well, not anymore, huh? Um, so, like I said, that when it comes to figuring out what is foolish and what isn't, this stuff in the Bible gives us the basis of things to do and what not to do. But uh, a lot of it requires that you think before you act. Study these things before they come up. Um, so I've found that you just look around you and see what other people are doing. And that's how I. That's something I've done ever since I was a uh, teenager. As I've seen mistakes other people make, and I say, well, that didn't work for that person. Why do I think it's going to work for me? You know, and which kept me out of trouble for the most part. I've done foolish things too. Um, I'm by no means an angel. Which if you re watch my other uh, blogs on this series, I've uh, discussed uh, that this topic is just as, you know, goes to me just as much as anyone else. You know, the thing is, I've realized where I've messed up and I'm trying to correct it. So, if these blogs are stepping on toes, maybe you need to look at it and say, yep, yeah, I messed up. Now what do I do? It's by, I'm by no means judging people uh, by doing these blogs, and all my blogs are like that. So, part three of uh, financial success. Don't be a fool. Be wise. If you're hanging around fools, I mean, by all means, be their friend. It's a good example. But you shouldn't be going out and hanging out with them all the time. Find wise friends. Friends that you can say, wow, what did this person do? Hang around them. Learn from them. Instead of condemning uh, people who are financially successful, try to find out what they did. And by no means I'm um, saying, you know, if they've uh, cheated or stealed, you know, or uh, gone against God's word to be financially successful, uh, get away from them because they're going to fall. Um, but take the good. Learn from it. Well, like I said, this one here is, this blog is a little bit shorter because it's in general um, study up on finances, um, learn what behaviors are good and which ones are bad, 
challenge all things. Hold fast to that which is good. It's the Oklahoma Tomcat. Take care. God bless. Sharing your deepest secrets. Maybe I'm telling you I like the way love looks. The way it looks on you. I like the way love looks. Oh, you.